the tack that I'm taking is a little bit different. It's a little bit more small scale than what Simon's been talking about. Um, I guess that over the past few years, a number of quite extensive training programs for librarians have been developed. So Simon mentioned the Manta program, and people may be aware of the ADM Rose program out of the University of Sheffield as well. So they're quite extensive curricula that take people through some lecture style presentations and there might be course readings and quizzes and hands-on kind of activities. But I guess with the exception of the, the program at La Trobe that Simon's described and probably the immersive informatics program at Melbourne, um, most universities are haven't really gone down the path of developing a really extensive program for this stuff like that yet. So most of us who are moving into this area are really upskilling, I guess, through secondments onto projects, through attending webinars um, like this and webinar, perhaps doing some professional reading, engaging at conferences on, on Twitter and things like that. So in that context, I think kind of in-house introductory workshops um, are, have a really important part to play in bringing groups of librarians together at an institution and getting them to develop a shared understanding, even if that's somewhat basic, of research data management in the context of their institution. And what prompted me to, to write the paper for eResearch last year was the success that we'd had with a scenario as part of introductory workshops. And the success of that scenario has prompted me to do a bit more digging into scenario-based learning more from an educational perspective. So I think it's applicable not just to, to library training, but also to the training that we as librarians might want to do um, out with the research community in our organisations. So the, the, what I'm talking about today really comes out of work both at Monash and at Griffiths. So in 2012, we had a couple of half-day workshops for library staff at Monash. Um, and in 2013, there were three quite similar sessions at Griffith. So at both of those institutions, the first part of the workshop was a little bit of reflection about what the participants hoped to get out of um, that. That was followed up, I guess, with a more sort of lecture-oriented um, session where we talked about what did we mean by research data, talked a bit about the funding agency requirements and some of the trends in scholarly communication around data citation, data journals, repositories and that type of thing. But the second half of the session we really went into this group exercise which involved a scenario and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So the way that the scenarios worked, they presented a little um, narrative about a higher degree by research student at the start of their project. They had a name, they had a little biography that described who they were and why they wanted to do this PhD that they were embarking on. Talked a little bit about their research topic and the methods that they were going to be using um, to, to gather and analyse data as part of that. And it also talked a little bit about their goals around the dissemination of their research results. So the groups were asked to have a look at this scenario and then to identify at least two potential data management issues, one technical and one non-technical, and we asked them to report back. So they um, were given big pads and whiteboard pens, got to have a bit of a discussion, and then someone volunteered to be the scribe and report back to the larger group at the end. So in terms of how the session actually went down, the discussions that the sex exercise generated were really lively, both at Griffith and at Monash. And at Monash, the, the attendees said that the scenarios were the most useful part of the workshop and so they were so went down so well that I actually shared them on the ANS bulletin board at that point and let people know that it had been a really good exercise. The groups were actually able to, to identify multiple data management challenges in a range of areas, so storage, file format, software, hardware, obsolescence issues, um, ownership, copyright type issues, ethical issues. So even though we only asked them to come up with two um, 
most of them filled the page and came up with many, many more than what they were asked for. The librarians participating seemed to be able to make connections between their existing knowledge and skills and those needed for this new area through this exercise. So that applied both to fairly library specific areas like copyright and intellectual property, but also to things that you might consider just more common sense areas like storage and backup. Attendees really engaged with the scenarios from other disciplines as well, so having the groups report back on um, their scenario and their findings from it really brought out the similar similarities and differences across disciplines. Discussing it as a group as well, I guess, enabled staff in different roles and from different levels to work together. So some of the staff that were involved had had a bit more experience, perhaps through working on an ANS project, and they were able to share what they had learned with other staff through doing this exercise. But something that um, I also observed at Griffith was that um, some new professionals that hadn't really had much chance to have any practical experience in this area still made really valuable contributions to the discussion. Um, and my take on that would be that probably the inclusion of things like digital collections and data management in the library school curricula is starting to expose people to that in a way that if you've gone through library school 15 years ago like I did, you, you didn't really get that. So in looking at um, what we mean by a scenario, um, Ed Arrington is one of the people who's written quite a lot in this area, so this was his kind of definition. The scenarios that we developed weren't developed with any reference to all this literature about scenario-based learning. I'm not really an expert in educational development at all. Um, my take on this, I guess, from a more technical background would be it's a little bit like personas and um, web development, but, but I wasn't familiar with all the literature around this. But the positive reaction to it has really prompted me to, to look at it um, in a bit more detail. So the proponents of this kind of learning argue that it's a really effective way of engaging um, participants and building skills in professional areas where there's some kind of uh, need to interact with clients in the workplace to diagnose problems and determine a kind of intervention. And so the kinds of professionals that um, often, often um, this type of learning is applied to, uh, clinicians, emergency response personnel, um, teachers, nurses, vet scientists, um, a whole bunch of groups. Um, so over the next few slides, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the best practice suggestions from the educational development literature and how that did or didn't relate to what we did at Monitoring Griffith. So I guess the first thing to say is that those scenarios were developed really quickly and I didn't give a lot of thought at the time to thinking about what skills we were actually trying to develop in the people that were, were participating. So the scenarios that, that were there wouldn't actually address the skills that you would need to consult with a researcher if the primary purpose of that was about advocating about the benefits of data management or promoting institutional services like data storage, um, because you do need that understanding of the broader environment and the application of, I guess, verbal communication skills like communication and persuasion, negotiation. But on the other hand, if a consultation with a researcher is seen as being about a needs assessment or a gap analysis where you might got, take that information away and then come back later to talk about what is needed. I think the focus then would be more on listening skills, maybe note taking skills and the ability to ask open questions, which is something many of us would have been trained in um, in reference interviews when we did our library training. So I guess that whether scenarios are going to be effective really depends on what you think the expected outcomes um, of a consultation type process might be. And I think that um, that wasn't really clear to me at the time. So I think if we're asking librarians to consult with researchers, we need really clear goals for those conversations so that we can determine 
what skills are needed and how we can train people appropriately. The other thing I guess is, is different types of scenarios. So problem-based scenarios involve decision making or the analysis of a problem or a narrative that um, is usually incomplete or ambiguous. Um, Issues-based scenarios um, involve exploring an issue from different and sometimes competing viewpoints and that kind of can be useful where attitudes and beliefs and values um, are important factors. And speculative-based scenarios really require people to think about factors that might be going to impact on their profession um, in the future based on extrapolating from what we know now. So understanding more about those different types of scenarios and making choices between them would definitely be something I would be looking at in future. So the scenarios that we used at Monash and Griffith were very basic problem-based scenarios, uh, but depending on the skills that librarians need, you might want to look at alternative or supplementary approaches. So, for example, an issues-based activity might look at um, something from the perspective of different stakeholders like the vice chancellor, the research office, an IT person or a librarian, and ANDS had in fact done that in some of their training workshops. So that one would be really useful if it's about countering negative attitudes rather than just identifying factual problems and trying to solve them. Um, a speculative based approach um, that would give participants a chance to, to think about some broader professional issues so you could throw something out there for example what, what would it mean for our library if um, data sets suddenly became something that were counted for, for um, HERDIC and ERA that kind of thing. A third kind of lesson learned, I guess, is that um, while you can take a satirical approach or um, aim for a caricature, most people are, are really going for a level of realism um, in developing these scenarios. So when I was developing these scenarios, I really pulled together kind of an aggregate of a lot of the real life issues that had emerged through email inquiries and through HDR training sessions um, in the couple of years previous to that. The other thing that I've always found very useful, which was suggested to me by a librarian at Monash, was just getting hold of some theses and articles from that discipline and reading the method section so that you can get um, an insight into the kinds of methods people are using for capturing and analysing data in different disciplines. So all of the scenarios did include details about the researchers' motivations and specific goals around what they wanted to do with their research at the end of the project. And some of that was around some non-traditional outputs, so including things like conference presentations or wanting to, to do a documentary for radio or perhaps produce a, a less scholarly kind of book rather than just the usual journal articles. Um, and that seemed to go down quite well. It helped librarians to see the problems that the researchers might have as things that were going to affect them personally in terms of their achievement of their personal and professional goals at the end, not just as technical things that needed to be fixed um, as part of the project. I guess another lesson learned is really around complexity and ambiguity. So Andrew Cox from the University of Sheffield is one of the developers of the RDM Rose curriculum for librarians and he has really emphasised that research data management just as in an area where simple solutions are available. So he talks about it as a wicked problem and says, you know, everyone's got a different perspective on it. There's all sorts of political and cultural and economic constraints. There's uh, many ways that we can intervene, um, but it's not always clear to us what the effect of those actions uh, might be. So that kind of situation appears to be when the, the, the practitioners of scenario-based learning say that um, SPL is good for. Um, com they argue that complex scenarios really discourage students from thinking that there are correct answers to, to problems that are going to change all the time. And so it's about encouraging people to focus on the journey rather 
than the destination in a way. But those practitioners of scenario-based learning also do say that while incompleteness is motivating for some people, that ambiguity actually makes a lot of other people quite uncomfortable. And I think uh, my experience both at Monash and Griffith was that the, both, both institutions, the librarians, um, asked me f to provide the answers um, to the exercise that we were doing. And while I didn't do that at Monash, I did kind of relent at Griffith and provided a set of the scenarios with some kind of pointers to what I thought might have been possible things that they could have come up with. And I guess um, in retrospect, I feel like that did actually diminish the effectiveness of it as an activity. For me, I guess I, I, you know, it made me feel a bit sad that the librarians participating in those exercises didn't really trust their own judgment. And so I, I think there's an open question there for us as a community about our willingness to accept that something is just going to be complicated and messy um, and that we just have to find ways to deal with that both professionally and kind of personally. So I guess just in conclusion, I think librarians need professional development opportunities that really explicitly address their changing roles and give them a way to, to take action. And so in real life, as a librarian supporting research data management, you are likely to be going out on your own. You're likely to be going out to the researcher's workspace, which might be quite unfamiliar to you, and you're really getting bombarded with information that's quite unstructured, might be incomplete, it could be full of new terminology and concepts like Simon was talking about. So in contrast to that, scenarios can be quite closely designed to highlight some things and minimise others. So I think it gives um, staff a way to come at a problem and explore it with their colleagues in an environment where they feel a bit safer than going out and doing that face-to-face -face with a researcher. Um, I think there's a lot of further work that we can do in this area. Um, as I say, I'm not an educational design specialist and I think that partnering with those kinds of people um, is going to be essential as we, we kind of move forwards with this. And the, the kinds of scenario-based learning things I've been describing today are not going to always be appropriate. So knowing when to adopt things and how to do it is, is something to think about. Um, I guess that the scenarios I've described today, although they worked really well, they were very basic. And I guess I've, through this research I've become aware that there's probably um, a lot more that could be done there by looking at those different types of scenarios and, and seeing how they go. I guess I also wanted to say, you know, there's a need to evaluate the training programs that we're doing. So while those scenarios were really engaging for people at the time, um, it's not clear to me that they did actually lead to any change in practice by the people that attended. So I think more explicit feedback from the people that attended um, and maybe doing some kind of self-assessments before and after some of the training programs that we're running might assist us with just determining whether we're kind of on the right track with building people's skills over time.